Uh, I think it's always been a big component. It's uh, to say it's bigger today. I guess you could say that most people would say that it's it's bigger today. But if you look back through history, the, some of the best players that ever played the game, and I'll go back to Jack Nicklaus, well, he was the longest in his era. So, I mean, you know, Sam Snead was the longest in his era. Ben Hogan in his era was one of the longest. So Greg Norman, when he was former world number one, was the longest in his era. So these guys have all, all these good players have always had the length. Um, but it's length is it's it's hard to put a price tag on length because it's so valuable on par threes to par fours to par fives that you have a big advantage, and uh, and it's gotten to some some point at times where you know hitting in the fairway didn't matter as much as the length, and uh, but I, hopefully I think going in the future, I think uh, for rumblings they're you know hopefully solve that somehow you know in a variety of ways make make holes tighter you know they made them longer and it still hasn't hasn't changed but if you look go back through history also the scores they're shooting today to win are not much different than they were 15 years ago if you just look at the winning score so technology's come a long way but the scores really haven't moved in the way technology has but courses have got longer yes courses have gotten way longer because that's their answer to uh, you know hopefully you know, making the courses hard, harder and not shooting as low scores. But if you go to certain golf courses where these guys still, they, once in a while they go to an older type course, the scores, that doesn't mean they tear it apart. It's just, it's set up differently. You know, you look at Hilton Head over the years, those scores haven't changed and they don't shoot. It's not like they shoot 30 under, but uh, it's a very short course in today's standards. So far with all the guys, you know, we've got three new drivers. And I'm holding, this is actually mine, uh, ST200. We have the ST200G and the ST200X. And so far in the testing, everybody has loved all the drivers. Um, they cover a variety of players from guys who want to hit it right to left, left to right, maybe move it up and down with the, flex, with the flexibility of changing the loft and then changing the spin on the G. Um, we've had guys asking the testing really is, we've had guys walk away saying, hey, I could hit any one of them. And the drivers aren't just for tour players, they're for everybody. They're for the guy that hits it way right, and you know, playing at your local club that's a 15 handicap. Well, he could go to the X driver to help compound hitting it way right and, and you know, get the ball a little straighter. The G driver, the same thing. You could do the same thing with that. Left to right and change the weights. Um, and the ST is really more of a, a neutral driver. Uh, guys can still turn it over right to left if they want to, uh, but they can also easily fade it. Um, but the drivers so far, when all the testing have been really, they're taking a variety of them. They're taking either all three or they're taking two of the three, and it kind of just player dependent on what shot shape he hits. Luke Donald is a guy, and, and we heard this today, is trying to be more taken away right to left as much as he has in his in years past. He's always normally been a right to left player, and now he's trying to work on his swing and get it more neutral. I would say to where he can hit shots left to right and still hit some shots right to left if he wants. So the G driver so far since Luke came from the 190 is really and the testing has shown is really about where he needs where he can optimize both ways um, actually the x driver is still a possibility in there for luke uh, but the st is probably not not really what luke's looking for but then on the flip side when you go to keith mitchell keith mitchell is a guy that absolutely 100 percent does not want to miss a ball left he wants to see it straight to slightly go into the right so the ST for Keith tests out great for him. He sees that straight to the right, dropping to the right, knows the left's out of play. So the X driver really for him has no interest, but the G driver still possibly could, depending on moving the weights. But so far I see him, you know, moving towards the ST. He's a bomber, right? He just gets and, out And there. he's a bomber. And traditionally, if you look at the bombers, for the most part, they all hit it pretty straight to left or right. Um, but, and then Stephen Fisk is the same thing. He's not a bomber. 
he's more in Luke's category as far as distance. And um, he's a guy that absolutely doesn't want to hit it left either. So he's always looking, they're looking at the driver, okay, how can I take left out of play and just might have my miss right? Well, Steven has picked the ST so far. And uh, now he could probably hit either of the three, which he has, and he likes them, but he's picking one more for his personal shot shape. And that's the key with the three drivers. You can actually pick what you're looking for in your shot, and we have a driver for that. Yeah, the, uh, the ST, standard ST200 would be mine. I, I'm coming from the ST190. I'm a guy that likes to hit it fairly straight to let it slightly drop right. And um, even though I was back and forth on the G driver at times, I just felt that the ST just worked out better for me. Uh, even though the G was just as good or had some possibi possibility of some better numbers as far as ball speed a little bit, but that, that wasn't the total sell for me. It was like, what can I get in the fairway the easiest? And uh, that's why I landed on the ST.